Welcome to the Nanakook Lenni Lenape Tribal Nations Native Power Hour, a public humanities broadcast. I'm Linda Little Bright Star Jackson, your host, and this is the native voice of Lenape Hokan and the Nanakook Lenni Lenape Tribal Nation. I hope that you enjoy this episode. The Nanakoke Lenni Lenape Tribal Nation and the Native Power Hour is happy to present tribal artist Kevin Street Sr. Kevin's going to tell us about how to make smudge feathers and what smudge feathers are used for. So Kevin, welcome to the Native Power Hour. Thank you for having me here today and uh, inviting me to be part of your uh, program, the Power Hour. Um, today we're going to discuss a little bit about smudge feathers, um, what smudging is. Um, smudging is traditionally used for a ceremony to purify and to cleanse the soul from negative thoughts or feelings from a person or even a place. It is traditionally, um, we use herbs, sacred herbs, such as tobacco, um, cedar and sage. What would be done is we would use an abalone shell, place the herbs inside and we would light it and we would use the smudge feather to to bring the smoke toward the body and use we would just use that as cleansing of the of the soul. And use it. Some people you can you can even use your hands. But today we're discussing smudge feathers. And let's talk a little bit about the feathers itself. Traditionally, I use all natural feathers, which are, I like turkey feathers. And feathers play an important role in traditionally in the native, to Native American people. Um, the turkey played an a, a very important role. And as you can see, I use traditional turkey feathers and that's all that I use. Um, it is a wing feather. Now as you can see, the wing feather is naturally curved. So in the preparation for making a smudge feather or a prayer fan, we would have to straighten the feather to make it more presentable in creating the fans or the smudge feathers. Um, and in doing so, what happens, there's a little secret that we have, and it's by heating the feather to straighten it out. And I'm going to show you how easy that, that is done. I have my iron right here. Now you don't want to set it too high because if you put it to the iron too high, it will burn the feather. So I like to use around um, cotton setting or whatever, and just place it on your ironing board if you have an ironing board or a piece of a towel like I'm doing so. And you would just hold it down onto the feather for a few seconds. As you can see, I meant to show you that you can see that it's curving. I'm, you will be able to see what's going to happen to the feather once it is heated. So again, I'm going to place it on the towel and I'm going to lightly iron it with the iron. I flip it over. And as I'm doing this, I'm slightly giving the stem or the, what do you want to call it, the shaft of the feather, a little tug. And as it's heated, as you can see, I'm going to pull in the direction that I want the feather to go. And as it cools, you will see that it will begin to straighten and take form of the shape that you want it to have. I'm going to iron it some more. Sometimes the stem of the feather is pretty thick. 
and it takes a little bit more heating and a little bit more time to work with it and while you're doing this please do not bend too hard on the stem because they will break so you got to be kind of gentle with it And as you can see, what is taking place on the feather, the house straighted and it's nice. It has a little bend to the side. Again, you can heat it and it will straighten out for you. This process is also used to when we make um, prayer fans, such as these that we create, which I will show you later on in the video. But this is the process that we go through to straighten the feathers, to make the smudge fans. Now that we got the feather pretty much straight, we can move on to the process. I'm gonna move the iron. I can't leave my towel there, but that's good. What we're going to need to do to create the feather, we have to depend on some, how long that you want your handle to be. I like mine to be comfortable where I can put at least my fingers on it to use comfortably. Next, you will need a strip of leather, which this is what I use. I use the um, buckskin, the natural buck hide, buckskin hide. And to normally to make a with a normal stem, I suggest maybe one and a half inches of leather material. And what I would do is I would take a ruler and measure over the one and a half inches and cut out the piece of material to resemble something like this. I also like my smudge feathers to have a fringe. Now, depending on how long you like to have your fringe, and the fringe is the part that hangs down from the feather when we're done, the fringe. Um, I like mine to be a little long, but depending on how you like your fringe, you can cut it the length that you want. Normally, I cut the strip uh, usually 10 inches or so, 10 to 12 inches, depending if I'm going to put a sling onto the feather. Why do I put slings? I prefer to put slings on all of my feathers and my fans that I make because to the Native American people it is very sacred, very important that you that your feather or feathers do not ever touch the ground. So by putting a sling on a feather or a fan it reduces that chance of you slipping or dropping a feather. So uh, if you were making a fan and someone wanted to shake your hand or whatnot, you could release the fan and without dropping it and hitting the ground. But getting back to the, um, I cut the leather, the length that I want. You can either include the fringe the uh, sling into the fringe or you can make your own sling and this is where the buckskin lace would come into play. I would cut probably a 10 inch length and this I would cut and I would put on the feather and this would become the sling part. Which I have some here. I plan on doing two versions of the one with the sling and the one without. The first one I'm going to start with is with just the fringe. So you're going to need your feather, which has been prepared, your leather. Um, you're going to need, this is probably one of the most unnatural things that I don't use. And I use the dab of super glue only to hold the, the leather in place until I can finish it. So a dab of super glue, I'm going to use sinew 
Now this is artificial sinew. Real sinew, <laughs> it's very hard to get and it's very expensive. But you can purchase artificial sinew and it's natural color or you can get it in a dyed color. It works really, really great on any of your projects that you wish to, to do. So you're going to need the sinew, which I'm going to sit there, and a pair of scissors. First thing I do is I'm going to remove this towel if I can, so I can work a little bit uh, better here, because I don't need this to iron anymore. Let's put that in there. So I have my feather, I have my leather, my scissors, and my sinew. And first thing I do is, because I'm going to put, um, this is going to have the lace or the fringe hanging down. So I'm going to place my feather onto the leather onto feather onto the piece of buckskin just to see how far it's come up and where the end of the quill is going to be. So after placing the feather onto the buckskin, I would measure how far it's down and I would mark how far the quill comes down on the leather and I would put a little bit, a little mark to let me know how far to cut because now you don't have to take the scissors and create the fringe. All right, this is the little bit of part of time that um, takes a little bit of time to do. I need to put my glasses up for this. I do wear glasses. Um, depending on how large you want your fringe, you would keep cutting. This is the little bit of the time consuming part, the prep time. I just showed you how to get you, how getting your, your your feather straight and cutting the fringe and getting everything prepped for the making of the smudge feather. As you can see, I'm only cutting up to where the mark that I made here. You don't want to cut below that because that is where the handle is going to be for around the quill. So I'm going to continue to cut the fringe. This is the part that I mentioned earlier. If you would like to implement a sling onto your fan or your smudge feather, that you would probably cut your piece of leather a little bit longer, the longer length, because you could create your sling right into your fringe. And I will show you how that can be done but this one here, I'm just doing a fringe, a simple uh, smudge feather. I think I got room to cut one more. There. So now we look, we can see the fringe. There it is there. Now that we have that done, I would take the feather and I would place it on top of the leather or the buckskin. 
and I wrap it around. I like to keep the seam on the back side of the feather. You don't want your seam to be on the front. That's my personal. I like the seam in the back. So I would lay and I would try to center it the best that I can onto the leather. This is where the super glue comes in. I use I would take a little dab, put it there, and I will hold it. Trust me, super glue does not take very long. As you can see, that quick it, it grabs. And be very careful. It is true what they say about super glue. It will stick your hands to your fingers together. It will keep and whatever you touch with the super glue, it will do it. So be very careful with that. And as I start the first, I got the first section tacked there. Then I move down a little bit. I use the super glue again. And I will put just a little bit to go down the, the quill. And again, I will fold it over. And as you will see, it doesn't take but a second for that to grab. Now to finish this part, you would just push the leather around. Leather does buckskin does stretch a little bit so it will allow you to pull and as you can see how I'm pulling uh, I'm trying to see there that it's wrapped around it this again is where I use a dab of the super glue I will place it right there and I will pull part there don't necessarily worry about the bottom at this time because the leather is I keep wanting to say that buckskin is stretchable it will work with you but that first part to make it nice and neat as you can see is finished and it's secured on the back it's not going to go anywhere stretch your buckskin or your leather a little bit more again I'm going to use a dab of the super glue a little bit of dab a little bit of dab and again be very careful not to touch this with your fingers if you are going to use super glue. So I'm going to pull, I just pulled it around. And as you can see, it doesn't take very long for it to grasp. You need to tighten up a couple little spots. Just add a little bit of some more dab of the super glue. Continue to wrap it around. Hold it in place for a couple of seconds. And there, that completed part looks. It's that part, it's done. Okay. I usually give that a few seconds even though it's stuck it takes a couple minutes to just to make sure that that is secured and stays because you're going to be manipulating it a little bit and you don't want it to come apart while you're finishing up the feather next we're going to move on is using the sinew what i like to do is first start out the sinew make sure that you cut a long enough strip to wrap your stem with or your part your handle because you don't want to go too short and get in the middle of your thing, then you can't, you don't have enough sinew cut. So it's better to have more than it is to have less. So make sure that you have a long enough. I probably have a piece that's probably three foot and 
I'd rather be long than longer than not have enough. So again, so that the sinew is easier to wrap around the handle. I put again a little dab of super glue right at the bottom of the stem. Right at the bottom of the stem. And then I take the little piece end of my sinew and I stick it right in there. And I hold it down for a few minutes, a few seconds. Again, it doesn't take long for it to take hold. As you can see, it's right at the end. It's secured there. And that's where I'm going to start my, my wrap on the bottom. So what's going to happen? This is where sometimes it gets a little bit tricky because the fringe is hanging down and it seems to get in your way, but you got to kind of work around it. So I, I like to start on the bottom and I start wrapping the sinew around so I get a nice little base that I like. As you're wrapping your sinew, you can create whatever pattern you want or would like onto your handle. As you can see, I like using the dark sinew on the lighter color buckskin and the feather and it's all about presentation and your preference because I just personally like the contrast of the dark sinew compared to the more natural sinew as you can see if this sinew was used you would barely see it but this is traditionally what would be used of our people that it would be in this form but since we have senior color i like the look and i like the appearance of the dark sinew so i choose to use that but anyway as we're wrapping the handle with your sinew and you get a nice base you can create whatever pattern that you would like as you go up the handle i like to form a little x and you as you're going up, you try to evenly space the sections between the sinew and keeping a little tension on it. As you can see, as I'm going up there, I'm trying to keep the same space as I'm going up and I'm trying to keep tension on the sinew going around the handle. And you just continue to go up you get to the top as you can see how that looks there and you make a few wraps around the top of the handle and you got to kind of pull the little fluffs out of the way because I like that appearance also as you can see the little fluff of the feather which makes it look really traditional and really nice and it's natural so after you make the couple wraps around the top and now I'm going to go back down the, the handle and I like to create an X or whatever pattern. That seems to be what I like. And I will show you what that looks like as I'm coming down the handle. I'm going to be crossing over the sinew. And before I get all the way down, I will show you what that looks like. And it creates a nice little pattern. Like I said, it's your preference, but it's what I like. And it makes the handle look very nice and attractive. So as I continue down, again, creating the X's, keeping tension on the sinew. So I get back down to the bottom. Again, I have tension, as you can see how that looks. Looks pretty good. Again, I will make a couple of wraps around and this is where I was telling you about making sure you have enough sinew to go because you don't want to be short. 
it's too long I, I cut it off and what I use as you can see I like to end my wrapping on the back side of the feather I would do this same process if I was making creating a larger fan but I like to end on the back side of the feather because you don't want to have the ending on your the on the front side of your feather so I do it on the back and what I have here is a large needle and it has a big hole so which makes it easy to get the sinew through and I'm going to use that I'm going to thread the end of the sinew through the needle and what I'm going to do now I'm going as I thread it through make sure that it's through there sometimes you have to do a little bit of everything that you got to get done but that's all good and I go under the wraps at the bottom and I pull the sinew through I like to do it twice even though one will hold but I like to do it two times again go through under the bottom go through the wrap pull the sinew through until it's snug give it a little tug and take your needle out you can just trim off your little end here And there you have what's nice about artificial um, sinew is that you have that little piece there can't do this with real sinew but you can do this one you take your little lighter and please don't hold it onto your leather too long but if you just touch that a little bit your stem is gone Me personally, just got to be real careful not to touch your feathers. You turn it to the side, you can keep the string sinew a little bit, the artificial sinew, just a little bit, and it seals it for you. Now, for me, I like to make sure that it stays together again this is where the super glue comes in all it takes is a little dab at the bottom where the knot is just don't touch at the bottom until it completely dries but there you have this is a smudge feather completed with the fringe pretty good We are going to, I'm going to show you how to create another one. And I'm going to include the um, sling into the next one. All right, this is your basic smudge feather without a sling. As I told you earlier, I prefer to mine with the sling for the, for the traditional reasons of not being able to drop your fan or your feather and having it touch the ground and for security purposes. Uh, so that is one completed very nice fan again I'm going to take another feather this one here I've already prepared straightened it out pretty good I might even have another one that's here um, I will go with this one it's already been prepared straightened and we will go through the same process I have enough seed to handle that one. I'm going to, again, we will cut another piece of buckskin and I will go through the same process. But like I said, we're going to add a sling. Now this is just a long piece of the same buckskin. You can 
create it from the buckskin or you can use the buckskin lace that's already been spooled and you can purchase and use this as well for the same purpose the same length same thing that I'm going to show you okay again we're going to lay the feather onto the buckskin we're going to make a mark at the bottom of the quill where it comes so that we know how far to cut up for the fringe now this part you can either cut the fringe first or we can apply the sling I like to do the sling first Again, this is where the super glue comes into play. Please be very careful when you do this because it only takes the drop. As you can see, buckskin has a smooth side, very nice side, and it has a rough side, which is the under hide. So I like for the, we want to have the smooth side was showing. That's the nice side. So if you're using the buckskin lace, this is going to be the same thing. It has a smooth side and a rough side. I want the rough side up against the stem of the feather. We'll take the feather. I will turn it on its side. And I will put a drop of super glue right at the bottom of the stem. And I will just lay that on there. This is the part that I'm telling you to be careful with because it will stick to your fingers. And it's going to have me do it again. As you can see, I did the one side of the feather, just on the tip. And I'm going to take the other side. I'm going to put a, just a drop of super glue. And I'm going to do the other side, just like I said, be real careful not to touch. There's the beginning of the slant of the feather. Let me turn it that way so that you can see. Now, while that's drying, we can move on to the fringe part. Again, as you can see, I marked down where the quill is going to come at the bottom. So I'm going to cut again, take my scissors. And cut all the way up to that mark. Now, depending on your preference, which I should have mentioned on the beginning, you can make your fringe however thick that you want to cut it. If you want it bigger or wider, I like mine kind of thin because it makes it more, I don't know, more, I would just say, more attractive to me. Moves around freely, looks more traditional. Remember not to cut up past your mark that you made. Better to be short of the mark than to go too far.
couple more. Now you gotta make a couple more cuts. There you go. Now we have our fringe cut. As you can see, it didn't go past the mark. It's right there. Now we're going to do the same thing as we did on the other one. We're going to place the feather. Like I told you, I like this, the seam in the back side of the feather. So I place it down there and I want to wrap that around. As you can see, the sling now that is hanging. So we will do the same thing as we did on the other one. Again, we will use a dab of the super glue just to get it put into place when it takes a few seconds to hold the top then I will add a couple more going down the stem and I will try to keep it in the middle fold it over Hold it down for a few seconds. Now we will take the rest of it, wrap it around. Again, we will use our super glue. I use that little piece there, and I will put a dab right there. Hold it in place, give it a few seconds. Finish a couple more dabs of super glue. Hold that down for a few seconds. And there you go. That part, as you can see, I try to keep the seam on the back side of the feather this way you see you don't see the seam on the nice side of the feather i'm going to give that a few minutes one more a few seconds but a few minutes to to dry and since this is a short handle i Excuse me. I believe that I have enough sinew long enough, about a two foot piece, so to do this handle. Let that dry for see that good. And again, I like to at the very bottom to secure my sinew so that I can do the wrapping and put at the very bottom of the shaft I'll put another drop of glue and I'll stick the end of the sinew between the glue and the glue right there between the leather and I will press it down holding it together inside of the seam of the handle as you can see there. And we'll give that a few seconds to cure. Okay. 
Okay. Now we begin our wrap. Like I said, I like to begin at the base of the handle. This is where, again, you have to kind of keep the fringe out of your way. So you get this first couple of wraps. Keeping tension on it. Again, you can use whatever pattern that you like. I start wrapping, keeping tension on the sinew and even spacing, going up the handle. get to the top few wraps as you can see I try to keep the even spacing I'm going to start my way back down the handle again as you see I like creating the X it looks very nice to me and I try to keep it the X, as you can see, center down the middle of the handle. I work my way back down to the base. Again, make yourself a couple wraps around the bottom. Okay, like I mentioned earlier, I like to end my wrap on the back side of the feather, my large needle that will feed the end of the sinew through the needle, pull through, and on the back side, I will go under, take the needle and I will go under the wrap, under the wrap and pull the sinew through. I like to do this two times just to make sure it's secure. I'll go around and I'll go under the wrap again. Pull it through snug. Take my scissors. Cut the little end off. As you can see, I don't know if you can see, but there's a little tag there. I said with artificial sinew, you can lighter and just a little bit of heat. Don't let it stay too long, move, and it whew, removes the tag for you. This is what we were discussing about the importance of having a sling. With this one being created in, now when you smudge, put your hand in a sling. Now if you have no chance if someone to shake your hand or whatever, your feather will not touch the ground or your fan will touch the ground. Very nice thing to have on your fans. I think I believe that is very important to have on your fans. Not all of them have them, but I, most of mine, the ones that I do, have the handle or the sling. Now that's the sling, I, I forgot, I use it like I said to finish just to secure to make sure everything stays together I will put a little drop of super glue at that base where I made that tie again very nice fan this is the one with the sling now along with this you can make these as fancy as you would like you can put beads on the end tie them on to make them colorful um, you can do pretty much after this stage um, what you would like to make your fan more or smudge feather more attractive
along with making smudge feathers this is considered a prayer fan or a smudge fan is used for the same purpose the feathers are prepped the same way heating them and iron there's a little bit of trick to dealing with a with a fan because you have to take the feathers or find two or three feathers that match pretty good when what do I mean by match the stem part because it's, it's almost impossible to change the stem so you want something that's going to go together stems or pleat that will be able to touch on the bottom that you can secure together to make a nice fan they have to kind of match so if one if the feathers are not matching it's going to be almost impossible to keep secure the feathers together so you have to find the two or three feathers that you know, you fiddle around with them until you find a pair that matches. I don't have any with me today, but normally to make a fan like this, you would have to start out with your same process as making the smudge fans, but you would have to imply or implement um, a, I use a hot glue gun. And what I would do, I'd put my stems together on a table as you see here i would put them i would put them here on the table so that they would the stems would touch and you would hot glue them and make them stick together after you got them stuck together with the hot glue gun then you can go along to proceed on to creating a fan now this one here has a handle that i made out of wood and I just took the feathers, a little, I cut a center slice out of the middle of the dowel. And I put the feathers inside. And again, super glued. Not super glued, hot glued. Um, after that was the same process as making the smudge fan. Same, same process as far as the wrap. Obviously, you have to make your buckskin a little bit bigger because now you have a bigger handle so you, your cut has to be wider and as you can see I use the same pattern for the sinew going up coming down a few wraps same pattern um, the fringe and in this fan again I as you can see I have a bead here I incorporated the sling into the fringe by just tying off here, put a little bead at the end, same thing, then smudging, and again, if something happens, you can't drop your fan, your fan will not touch the ground because of the sling, which is very important. Now, let's talk about the process of smudging itself. Traditionally, we would use a abalone shell or some type of holder um, to hold the sacred herbs. Uh, we would place either the cedar or tobacco or the sage into the abalone shell and we would light it not light it to the point where phew, we have fire we just want all it takes is a little bit of smoke and what would be done is you would take your smudge feather and you would pull the smoke towards you the smoke would use was used to cleanse your soul cleanse yourself of um spirits and remove the negative neg negativity and make room for positive things so i must mention too that i understand that smudging is not a religious thing it is a cultural thing okay that's very important that we would 
It's, it's something that our culture does, that our people do. It's not a religious thing, it's, it's a cultural thing. And by smudging it, you, people even use their hands to bring the smoke to themselves. Now that I've shown you how pretty much to make a smudge feather, um, a simple smudge feather just with a fringe, uh, with the sling, and we showed you a little bit of process of how to make a prayer fan. It's very similar to the smudge fans. The uh, smudge feathers with a pretty fan, it's pretty much the same process. And like I said, you can make them as decorative as you want by adding different colored beads. And um, some I've seen some people do special beading and they add that stuff on to their um, smudge feathers and their fans. But for me, I'm a traditionalist and I try to stay as traditional as I can. That's why I only keep my feathers simple and traditional as possible. Now that I've shown you, I pretty much have um, done what I need to do to share my creating and making of the smudge feather with you. Um, it's been fun. Well, thank you, Kevin. It's been such a pleasure to have you here on the Native Power Hour today and to share your skills of making the smudge feathers and the fans. And I'm sure that um, it's going to help uh, others who would like to also try to um, make the smudge feathers. Um, for now, I wanted to ask you, could you tell us just a little bit about, about you, about Kevin Street Sr.? Well, my name is Kevin Street Sr., Native American. I am a citizen of the uh, Nanakot-Lenape Tribal Nation. I recently retired this year from the New Jersey Department of Corrections with 25 years of service. And yes, the question always, I always get asked, how's retirement? Oh, it is lovely. Um, I like the outdoors. I'm an avid fisherman, an avid hunter. I like taking hikes in the woods and that is pretty much where I find these. I find these. I do not purchase my feathers. I find all my feathers um, through my hikes in the woods and I pick them up and, you know, I clean them up. And a lot of times the way that I find them, other than the straightening, is the way that I present them. I don't touch them or paint them or do anything. Like I said, I'm more of a traditionalist. So, you know, they say that every, every feather has a story. So I don't want to change the story too much. So I like to keep it the same. Excellent. That was going to be one of my questions. If someone was going to try to um, make a smudge feather or uh, actually work with feathers, where would be a place that you would suggest that they look for feathers? Would it just be out near the ponds and the lakes? Well, if, if you're an outdoors person um, and you like to take hikes or whatever, to find turkey feathers, the best time of the year to find what that you would find plentiful would or best chance of finding a turkey feathers is in the early spring. That is during their mating season and that is when they do their molting. And you will find quite a few feathers. If you know an area or a family who lives in an area that has turkeys, I can show you early spring. If you take a walk in the woods, you will find some of these feathers lying around. And talking about feathers, uh, you mentioned turkey. Are there other types of feathers that you've used in some of your fans or some of your um, other pieces that you've made? What other types of feathers would well, you use? Well, my personal preference is turkey feathers. I have um, developed a fond, uh, they're just my favorites. Okay. But I do use sometimes um, again, on my walks, where I live, there's some agriculture areas and fields, and I find goose feathers. And uh, sometimes I use chicken feathers. But goose feathers are very nice when I can find them. And uh, I don't use chicken feathers very often, but primarily I only use the turkey feathers. Excellent. And eagle feathers, 
He said, are hard to get. You cannot. It's almost impossible to get an eagle feather. You had to, first of all, you had to be federally recognized, tribal, and Native American to even possess an eagle feather. So that's why I stick with the turkey feathers. Gotcha. Now, I know that you are our tribal artist for the Turtle Trading Post, and you uh, feature some of your smudge fans and your and fans. And there were some other things that you had also made for the Turtle Trading Post that are available here at 18 East Commerce Street. Can you tell us some of the other things that you like to work on besides the smudge feathers and the fans? What else do you have? Um, well, I started um, creating uh, the uh, war clubs. Um, I did hair ties, um, medicine bags. Um, I've done a few things that, about, you know, as far as uh, regalia, but um, smudge feathers and the fans are my favorite. Excellent. So if anyone's interested in the pieces that you had a chance to see today, uh, they are available at 18 East Commerce Street at the Turtle Trading Post in Bridgeton, New Jersey. So come on down and check out Kevin's pieces. There are feathers, there are the, the smudge feathers, the fans, uh, the hair ties, and medicine pouches. And come down and check it out. All right, Kevin, uh, I want to thank you for taking the time to share your craft with us today. And I want to say Wanishi. And we were so glad to have you today. And thank you again, Wanishi. Wanishi to you too. Thank you for having me. I hope that you enjoyed this episode of the Nanticoke Lenny Lenape Tribal Nations Native Power Hour, making a smudge feather with tribal artist Kevin Street Sr. The Native Power Hour has been made possible by a grant from the National Endowment for the Humanities, sustaining humanities through the American Rescue Plan in partnership with the Association of Tribal Archives, Libraries, and Museums. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and catch our next episode, Diabetes and the Impact of COVID-19, with our Tribal COVID Coordinator, Sherry Caputo. And again, my name is Linda Little Bright Star Jackson, and I will catch you next time on the Native Power Hour, Wanishi.